Here, Moosey, Moosey. Here, Moosey. Here, Moosey, Moosey. Bleh. Bleh. Moosey, Moosey, Moosey. Oh, what did you find there? Hello boys and girls, friends old and new, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dion, and today we have this uh, watch I just randomly found in the forest as I was out uh, walking my pet moose. I just happened to have my camera running. Now it's probably not new to anyone that the Norwegians keep moose as pets. Uh, mostly in the southern parts, the nor uh, northern parts uh, frequently have polar bears obviously. I mean, of course. Uh, but a little known fact about the moose is that they're actually really good at uh, finding uh, watches and Swiss watches in particular. So that's what you saw my moose did there with uh, pointing out there was a watch uh, lying completely randomly in the forest. And it looks a lot like a Rolex uh, Submariner. Now the thing with my moose is that um, of course, a couple of questions uh, arises, I would think, in uh, most people's minds when they uh, hear this. One, why didn't I leash the moose? Well, first and foremost, uh, there's no law in Switzerland uh, regarding pet moose. So it's, of course, easier to let them run free. And uh, secondly, you just tried to leash a two and a half meter tall moose that weighs 500 kilos during mating season. You may try that once. But also, the second question, um, when we see a little bit more of this watch, it's clear that it's not a Rolex. It has to be some sort of a replica or homage, as they call it. And the obvious question would be, why did my moose then mark for this watch? And well, to be honest, she is getting a little bit long in the tooth. She was already having trouble with the uh, IWC watches because they're so close to the German border. So I'm terribly sorry this was not an original uh, Rolex, but I'm also happy because uh, the condition of this watch is not good. Looks like it's been lying in the dirt for at least a couple of minutes. And just one last thing about the moose before moving on to the watch. You might have heard me uh, use the call to lure the moose. The it's something we call uh, rope på elgen in Norwegian. And pretty much all uh, Norwegian young men practice this every Sunday early morning after a night of excessive drinking and eating some expired kebab meat. Now let's look a bit more at the watch then. We see there's so much dirt here. And actually the second pinion appears to be bent. So we're going to have to unbend it. And this is a very delicate skill and something I really would not advise practicing at home uh, without extensive uh, experience. But let's see. And that seems to work out fine. Now this watch is so badly damaged, it kind of looks like it's done on purpose. So the only real option is to use this old Japanese technique called Korewa Mogi Bideo Des which roughly translates to reverse restoration in English, but it's not something you want to try at home. It requires centuries of first-hand experience to master this. But uh, first of all, let's uh, clean this uh, chronograph. And while the machine does its magic, let's turn to the dial and the date disc. We're going to use a specialized product they only sell in Switzerland. In French it's simply called a restoration liquid. 
but in German it has uh, the slightly longer name uh, Individuellen Gebrauch Armband und Ziffernblatt Wiederherstellungsflüssigkeitsmittel. And that is of course because this is the individual use uh, version. There is a version you can also use for multiple pieces at once. And that one is called the Massennutzung Armband und Ziffernblatt Wiederherstellungsflüssigkeitsmittel. So rolls off the tongue slightly easier. Well, let's see then what we can do about this horrendously damaged dial. We're going to put it into our restoration liquid. And then we have to uh, put that in the ultrasonic because we need to shake loose the molecules. All right, so let's see how that turned out. Wow, that is a big difference. But we see the lettering is still gone, so we are going to use this uh, special uh, thing that looks like a Q-tip, but it's actually made of ancient bones from uh, dinosaurs from the Jura Mountains, you know, where the Jurassic Park name came from. And with the right technique, we should be able to get the lettering back. Now, it should be obvious that this uh, liquid is extremely powerful. And uh, the Swiss actually guard it almost with their lives. It's part of the constitution that you're not allowed to uh, tell anyone outside Switzerland about this. So uh, I'm taking a big risk here, people, for you. But uh, in Switzerland, it sells for uh, one franc 99 uh, for five liters at uh, gas stations. All right, let's have a look at the balance. We can see the hairspring is badly tangled, but uh, the rim of the wheel even seems to be cut in two. And I'm starting to suspect this was done on purpose. Well, we have this uh, welding pliers. Uh, so you can see it's a pair of pliers with a battery on it. And this technique is all in the wrist. We have to melt the metal and weld it at the same time as we bend it straight. Steady, steady. Yeah, it looks much better. But we see the hairspring is still uh, badly tangled. So let's see what we can do with that as well. What we're doing is using uh, the metal uh, bipolarity of brass when we have two tweezers. Now we can gently nudge the hairspring back into its original shape. All right, let's put uh, the balance back on the cock. And then we're going to put that back on the main plate and see if uh, the balance will oscillate. And that looks just fine. Happy to see that. We're going to stop the balance also with the reverse technique. That's a pretty cool thing to do as a party trick. And uh, in Switzerland, it's kind of an unwritten law that uh, if you're invited to a party, you should always remember to have a main plate with a balance attached on it, uh, on your side pocket. And uh, of course, there's always some foreigners forgetting their puffers, and then they have to use uh, the mouse, which is really frowned upon. But the challenge is to see who can start and stop their balance uh, the fastest. All right, we have started uh, assembling the watch again. It's not a complicated watch. It's a simple uh, Miyota movement, but it does its job and it uh, kind of works. So let's put the balance in and see if it starts. I also wanted to show you the Scottish uh, back alley stabbing technique for putting on the cannon pinion. In case that went too fast, let's see it in slow motion. Requires a very steady hand. All right, let's complete the calendar works and the rest of the keyless works. And then we're almost uh, ready with the watch. That date disc looks almost uh, as new. There are a couple of other very interesting techniques I also wanted to uh, to highlight as we go along. One is for the hands. 
Uh, I managed to uh, find the hands again. You saw one of them dug out in the beginning, but we found all of them. And we're going to use the same uh, bipolar technique uh, with the tweezers to uh, straighten the hands and also uh, replenish uh, the loom. Very important to have a game plan going in that you know how you're going to twist this because you only get one chance. But that looks almost as new. We're also going to put the hands back on a little bit differently this time. We're going to use uh, the hand levers and pull the hands down with a magnetic force. And then we can, of course, press them on a little bit more if we need to. All right, let's uh, turn to the case. And we see it's badly damaged as well. Looks almost like if someone used a hammer on it. So we're going to use some emery paper and uh, gently uh, buff out uh, these uh, scratches. We're also using a special cream to make the metal flow back into its old shape. And this cream is made from uh, the milk from uh, male Himalayan wildcats. And it's very difficult to extract without very solid uh, oven mittens. The last technique I wanted to show you is the scooping technique for casing the movement. And properly executed, we see that the movement just kind of leaps back into the case. All right, last thing we need to do is to have a look at the case back. We saw the sapphire crystal was completely shattered, but that's going to easily buff out with some polywatch. There we go. And then we're all done. Let's look at some then and now. All right, I hope that by now no one is under the illusion that this was an actual restoration video. It was, of course, a full-on mockery. There's so much uh, faking going on on YouTube and also on other social media, so I thought it would be fun to make a parody out of it. No animals were hurt making this video, but a homage watch was utterly destroyed. I would urge everyone not to buy cheap knockoffs. It uh, really hurts the watch industry. And yes, Rolexes and many other brands are vastly overpriced, but that's a different discussion. I hope you liked the video. I hope you had a few laughs in these difficult times. If you did, then clicking like and subscribe will really help the channel. And please share it on social media as well. YouTube now has this new clips feature, which allows you to share your favorite moments of a video. Try it out. We'll be back with more actual restoration videos shortly. Until then... Hot up.